Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chai Vararutama Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Erirayet Nashta Praisa Badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Gyanati Mirandasya Gyanandana Salakaya Chakshulmalitam Jena Tashmai Sri Greve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Sarpitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahem Dadati Swapadantikam Vandiham Sri Gurunti Yutapada Kamalim Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Bitam Tam Sajiram Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagono Lalita Sri Visakam Bitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisai Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brandavani Shwari Prisaman Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vanchakal Pataru Vyascha Kripa Sandivyaye Vacha Patitanam Pavilivyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Kansala Sri Mad Bhagavatam Kiya Sri La Prabhupada Kiya Seven to fifty-four. Okay. 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 Sinmad Bhagwatam can to ten. Chapter 68, The Marriage of Samba, Text 47. Kopaste kila siksharatam Nadwe sannacha sudmat saraham Vibrato Bhagavan Sattvam 
Siti Palana Tat Param Kopaste Kila Siksaratam Nadwes and Nachamat Sarat Dibrato Bhagavan Satram Siti Palana Tat Param Kopaste Kila Siksaratam Nadwish and Nachamat Sarat Dibrato Bhagavan Satram Siti Palana Tat Param Vibrato Bhagavan Satam Sita Palam Satam Tajis Kopas Tekila Tacharatan Brato Bhagavan Sita Sita Bhagavan Sita Kopa Anger Te Yura Akila Of everyone Shiksha For the instruction Artam Meant Na not Dwesat Act of hatred Nacha Nor Matsarat Out of envy Vibrata Of you Who are sustaining Bhagavan O Supreme Lord, Satom, the mode of goodness, Stiti, maintenance, Palana, and protection, Tatpara, having as it intent. Translation and purport by the Prophet's disciples. Your anger is meant for instructing everyone. It is not a manifestation of hatred or envy. O oh, Supreme Lord, you sustain the pure mood of goodness, and you become angry only to maintain and protect this world. Please repeat. Your anger is meant for instructing everyone. It is not a manifestation of hatred. 
O envy. O Supreme Lord. You sustain the pure goodness. Sorry. You sustain the pure mode of goodness. And you become angry only to maintain and protect this world. Purport. The Kurus admit that Lord Balanam's anger was entirely appropriate and in fact was meant for their benefit. As Sila Bishonot Chakrabati put it, the Kurus meant to say, because you exhibited this anger, we have now become civilized. Whereas previously we were wicked and could not see you, blinded as we were by pride. Kopaste Akila Sixtaratam. Na duishan na cha matsarat. Ibra tu bhagavan satvam. Stiti palana tatvara. Anger. In in true nature, is a call for love. One becomes angry when our expectations are not met. So in general, anger is a call for love. We, we expect the promises made by someone to, be, to manifest, to happen as it is. In a conditioned life, we have material anger and we have a spiritual anger. Material anger is due to false ego. And you do not respect my exalted position. So I get angry. Due to false ego. <clears throat> and it's also due to envy. One, one is angry because what you are having is supposed to belong to me. But I'm not having it and you are having that. So I'm angry. Still, it is a call for love because if, if the things is given, our anger will disappear. That is the material side of it. The spiritual side is what the Kurus are explaining here. For a transcendental person or a pure personality, the anger is not material. The anger is the law of the superior for the junior. That is love. If we don't care for someone, if we're doing something wrong, it's not a problem. If we have love for somebody, 
we become angry when the person is doing something which is not beneficial for the individual and for others. So the Kurus are explaining that Lord Baladam's anger is not due to envy. His anger, it is actually beneficial. Tatpara. Tatpara. That's the word you see here. Tatpara. The reason for your anger is to help us become proper in our dealings. It is not due to envy. Your anger is actually good for us because it has helped us to understand that you care for us. So this is not anger, this is love. They said, if we are not angry with us, we would have come to this position where we are now to see your position as a supreme person of Godhead who is a well-wisher of everyone and you care for everyone. Therefore, you want to see that we are acting properly. So we are very happy that you are very angry with us. In a conditional state, we see things differently. Anger is of a superior person on us. It's not seen as something for our favor, something for our good. We, we, we consider it as this person does not like me. That is wrong. That is misunderstanding. When we care for a person, we want to see that the person is doing the right thing. And if that is not done, it is natural for a superior person to be angry. In fact, a bona fide leader must show anger. If he wants everything to be perfect in the organization, in the community, a superior person must show anger if you really care for people. Pritu Maharaj was very angry. Why anger? The anger was not personal. The anger was that you are not maintaining the citizen. That is a duty. Why are you not taking care of the citizen? He was angry. The anger is justified because it is meant for putting us on the right track. He was angry. A king, a bona fide king, a bona fide leader must be angry. A bona fide special master must be angry. If the student are not acting properly, was angry and give a chastisement. That is love. If it is not done, if the anger is not properly manifested when it is necessary, means the leader is not bona fide. And the student will not know what is right and what is wrong. Sila Papa was angry many times. A, disciple, a, a servant, a servant was not there. And Papa looked, the servant was not sitting there. So he went back to his room and waited. When some other devotees came to see him, after attending to them, <laughs> And he sent one of them to call the servants. The servant came in. Papa was angry. Why are you not here? Where did you go? Your duty is to be here. Why are you not here? Other devotees who were there were afraid that. And Sri Prabhupada is angry. Particularly, his holiness, 
Nabal General Maharaj, the eyes brought apart. When the God brother or God sister makes you feel angry like this, what should we disciples do? Should we beat him? Should we shout at him also? What should we do? Papa said, No, don't beat him. Don't be angry with him. You should appreciate the devotee that the Guru loves him. The Guru loves him. He cares for him. Therefore, he's attentive to his situation. That is the Guru's love for the disciple. So you should appreciate that. Don't think that this is a condemned disciple. He has, he has made my Guru to be angry. Therefore, I should be angry with him. That is an offense. Because the intent, that para, is not bad. It is for the benefit of the disciple. So anger, by a pure devotee, is the love he has for the disciples. So it is necessary for a superior person to show anger, but not a destructive anger that will not give chance for the, the disciple to see that this is actually a, a, the love of my special mass. It should not be a destructive anger, but a, an anger which is expression of love to protect the disciple. All the leaders in the, our tradition who had perfectly ruled shield anger. You be someone that's angry, Arjun is angry, Hanuman angry. But what was the result of that? They got promoted. Arjun got promoted, Hanuman got promoted. They became the best devotees because they appropriately use anger in Christian service. So the, the Kurus appreciated Lord Balaram's anger towards them. You are the maintainer of the whole world. You are the protector of everyone. So he, you know exactly where our fault is and you know how to correct us so that we don't deviate so anger is a call for love it's not so dangerous as we see it text 48 They are offering obeisances and glorification to Lord Balaram. We bow down to you, O soul of all beings, O wielder of all potencies, O tireless maker of the universe. Offering you obeisances, we take shelter of you. Purport. The Kauravas clearly realized that their lives and destinies were in the hands of the Lord. Why have they come to their senses to offer obeisances to the Lord? Something they did not do before. When the Balanam presented the request of Ugrasena, they were angry and they started insulting the Yadus. We gave them the position they have now. They don't suppose to use the royal the royalties. But due to our costless mercy, we give them the chance. Now they have become proud of the position, and the position is like 
the shoe which is meant for the feet, now you want to come to the head. That was the insult they gave. Because of the chastisement of Balaram, which was full of mercy, full of compassion for them, they became purified. If Lord Balaram hadn't chastised them, they wouldn't have gotten the purity to understand Lord Balaram's position and to offer him respect. In the beginning, they offered him respect because they know he's Balaram. And when he gave the order, they didn't see him as the supreme president of Godhead. But now, after being purified from his chastisement, from his anger, they are offering obeisances and they can see him as their well-wisher. They can see Lobalada now as their well-wisher. <laughs> you are the soul of all beings. Chastisement bring purification. For those who are very fortunate that will accept chastisement as costless mercy, they get purified. And devotees who cannot accept chastisement are devotees who are not ready to make advancement. Devotees who are refusing to grow in the Christian consciousness will not accept chastisement. It's a refusal to grow. Because the chastisement comes with loaded mercy. As you can see here, the Kurus can appreciate the Balaram only after they have been chastised severely by the Balaram. They got the purification to realize the position of the Balaram and their own, their own position. That uh, you are a tireless, tireless maker of the universe. And you are the shelter that we should take shelter of. This is the potency that comes from chastisement, which may seem as anger. For a pure person, the anger does not exist. His anger is actually love. It is not the anger which you understand. For a condition, so anger is very contaminating, very, very destructive. For a pure soul, or the supreme position of Godhead, his anger is perfect and is complete, is meant for purification. Because Tatpora, it is intended to help us, to get us out of our ignorance. And it is working because they were open, they accepted the chastisement, <laughs> they could see the potency which is there, they got purified and they are offering obeisances to Lord Balaram, accepting him as a supreme shelter, he's a supreme maintainer. Sugadev Goswami said, those propitiated by the Kurus, those city was trembling, whose city was trembling, and who we are surrendering to him in great distress. Lord Balaram became very calm and kindly disposed towards them. Do not be afraid, he said, and took away their fear. Lord Balaram, he took his plow. I will teach them the lesson. They disrespected the supreme presidency of God. They disrespected, disrespected Ugrasena and other great personalities. So I will teach them a lesson. What lesson? Chastisement. So Lobelan was dragging the whole city with a flock from. from from, from the earth, he put his plow down, he went down and uprooted the whole Hastinapura. And he went to throw to Ganga. When they saw the whole city was trembling, 
were shaking and looking around. What is happening? The Balaam's anger is uprooting the whole. So they came to their senses and started offering their respectful obeisances to Allah Balaam. What did he do? He, he was able to see they have come to their senses. They have repented. Repenting from their misdeeds and begging for forgiveness, the Baram did not retain his anger. Immediately he gave his anger because it was meant to teach them a lesson which they have now understood. The Baram withdrew the anger. Now he gave them assurance. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he was settled. He became calm. And they, they believe his word is supreme. But his promise, his promise is that you should not be afraid any longer because my anger is gone and your city is saved. So don't be afraid. Don't worry. What I wanted for you is to help you understand. But now that you have understood, there's no problem. He forgave them completely. He never remembered it again. Having done that, Dirudan could see that the Lord had become pacified and forgave them. So he came forward. Dirudan, being very affectionate to his daughter, gave as her dowry. 1,260 year old elephants, 120,000 horses, 6,000 golden chariots shining like the sun, and 1,000 med servants with jeweled lockets on their necks. Dirodan was thinking. Uh, if I if I if I didn't give something to make Ugrasena, Balanam and others, if I don't give my daughter sufficient dowry, something wonderful, they will not have respect for my daughter. No written there. Isn't it not written there? I want my daughter to be respected in the family he's going. Uh, Samba has kidnapped his daughter. That was the problem. Samba kidnapped his daughter. That is the way Satriyas get married. Satriyas, they show their strength and everything. But Samba kidnapped her because he likes her. The Rashasa marriage. It's, it's, it's authentic. It's approved for Satriyas. So Samba did. He knew that Ordinarily, they are not going to agree for him to marry. Or maybe the gay would also not like him. Using his satirical spirit, he kicked up. That was the, the, the reason why they fought. And now, it, it, the, the issue is settled. So, Lashman is going with her husband to a new family. Dirodan is thinking, let my daughter in such a way, let, let her go to her husband's place in such a way that when they look at her, her beauty, yes, they look at all the, the wealth that she's coming with, they will have respect. Oh, this is a, a good daughter. Um, it is very, very significant because... Uh, In Kali Yuga, we go beyond huh, the scripture. Conditional soul, we don't follow the scriptures. We, we use the scripture for our own selfish ends. Now, somebody now request, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this before I marry a daughter. 
Do you know that somebody didn't request for that. He simply loved the girl and he took her. This day we are requesting before I marry you, I need all this. If you don't give me this, I will not marry you. It is not in the scripture. This is, this is our whimsical behavior. We are making everything becoming material, nothing spiritual. The, the, the father of the girl, Durodan, considered with himself, I want to make my in-laws happy, respectful to my daughter. Therefore, he gave all these things on his own. It was not a demand. Therefore, uh, Lord Barnum was very, very happy to receive not the opulence which was given, to get his purpose of coming to Hastinapura fulfilled. He came with the purpose when they were discussing how to fight. Barnum said, no, it's not, it is not good for a family to fight. Let me go and discuss with them and settle it so, so that we don't fight. And he succeeded, that everything was settled. So he's coming back happily with all these wonderful gifts. It is not a demand. When we are making it a demand, means what? We are not marrying. That is not a marriage. It is a contract, it's a business. It is material, it is wrong. If it happens like this, naturally the woman is not going to respect you because she's going to rule you. See what I gave to you. You are nonsense, you are a poor person. Have to, I came to make you rich. There will be natural disrespect. You cannot do anything only if the girl said yes before you can do it. So you become a slave. It should not be done. A few years ago, I met a devotee. A devotee initiated a devotee. Initiated a devotee. Janmasami days was crying. I said, why? What is the problem? This, today is a auspicious day we are celebrating. Why are you crying? Is it pure love of Godhead? He said, no, Maharaj. It's not pure love of Godhead. What's the problem? See that Prabhu say he cannot marry me because I'm not giving all the things he wanted. I look at him, he's a devotee. Both of them are devotee, all initiated. They are demanding. Don't give me this, I'll not marry you. That is not marriage. It's a different thing altogether. Dirodan, naturally out of affection for his daughter, gave all this to make the family happy. That was his intention. The Supreme Lord, Chief of the Jadavas, accepted all these gifts and then departed with his son and daughter-in-law as his well-wishers bid him farewell. Then Lord Halayudha entered his city, Dwarka, and met his relatives, whose hearts were all bound to him in loving attachment. In the assembly hall, he reported to the Jadu leaders everything about his dealings with the Kurus. Lord Balaram is giving report of his activities. To who? He is the supreme personality of Godhead. What, what is he doing? What is he doing here? He's a supreme lord. He's teaching us what or how we should behave. He's coming here to give report to Ugrasena. The same thing Krishna always do. Every day, every day Lord Krishna will come before Ugrasena. As your lordship pleases. This, 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 today we did. He give report to 
Ugrasera. Of course, Udawa was not happy with it. Udawa was not happy that the Supreme Lord is doing this. The Lord is very, very, very merciful, very, very kind to his devotees. The Lord cares for his devotees. He respects his devotees more than himself. He told Udawa, my dear Uda, listen to me. Look, Brahma, who is controlling the whole universe, it's a great duty he has to do. It's not so dear to me. Lord Shiva, who is next to me, you know, so dear to me. My own brother, Lord Balaram, hmm? my second body, you know, so dear to me. My own wife likes me, the closest person to me, not so dear to me. Not even Brahma, Shiva, my brother, Balaram, and my wife likes me. I myself am not so dear to me like you. My friend, you see, devotee, your position is so exalted. You are a devotee, such, such a wonderful devotee that you own me. Krishna has told many times how he is the property of his devotees. He declared, If Srivas sells me, I'm sold. There's no doubt about that. If Vasudev that sells me, I'm sold. There's no doubt about that. I'm sold. My devotees have power because that is the nature of love to sell me. I completely depend on my devotees. Krishna is said to be the one that shelters everyone that is here, they are making prayer. But Krishna himself said, I belong and sheltered my devotees. That is Krishna's position. Even today, the city of Hasinapur is visibly elevated on its southern side along the Ganges, thus showing the signs of Lord Balaram's prowess. Purport. Sila Papa writes as follows. For the most part, it was the practice of the Satira kings to inaugurate some kind of fighting between the parties of the bride and bridegroom before the marriage. When Samba forcibly took away Lakshmana, the elderly members of the Kuru dynasty were pleased to see that he was actually the suitable match for her. In order to see his personal strengths, however, they fought with him and without any respect for the regulations of fighting, they all arrested him. When the Jadu dynasty decided to release Samba from the confinement Of the Kurus, the Baladam became the Baladam came personally to settle the matter, and as a powerful satria, he ordered them to free Samba immediately. The Kauravas became superficially insulted by this order. Superficially, it means that uh, it was not really an insult. But for the past time to take place, just for the past time to take place, they superficially felt insulted and Lord Baladam showed them the power which is supreme and they are able to realize that 
and came to their senses, and the matter is settled. The court of became superficially insulted by this order, so they challenged Obaladam's power. They simply wanted to see him exhibit his inconceivable trends. Thus, with great pleasure, they handed over their daughter to Samba, and the whole matter was settled. Durodan, being affectionate towards his daughter, Lakshmana, had her married to Samba in great pomp. Baladam was very satisfied after this great reception from the side with the Kurus. And accompanied by the newly married couple, he started towards his capital city of Dwarka. So Baladam triumphantly reached Dwarka, where he met with many citizens who were all his devotees and friends. When they all assembled, the Balaram narrated the whole history of the marriage, and they were astonished to hear how Balaram had made the city of Hastinapura tremble. Now we have a history, not only a history, we have a place to visit in Brindavan. We can hear, we can see these this places. And this, uh, this place, Jamuna, is divided mm, into many, many, many places. You can see it today. It is not, not just a history, it's a reality. It's something that really happened more than 5,000 years ago. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you. Very, very happy to see you. Thank you for your presence. I'm great, gratified by your presence. Hare Krishna. So we are, we are fortunate that uh, we, have, we have this wonderful heritage. We, we can really see it. When you visit Balnavan, you see the particular place and remember Lord Balaram and all these pastimes and get purified. So proper use the word superficial insulted. They were superficially insulted. If they were not, if they didn't feel insulted, no, but I wouldn't have shown this power. Then we have no, nothing to hear, nothing to see. The Lord made it. So we are grateful to the Kurus by being superficially insulted and they challenged Lord Baladam's strength and Lord Baladam exhibited it. Now we have something to think and meditate upon. If you think about these pastimes, not just the history, but we think about these past times and see it as it's happening, we get purified. Because Krishna and everything about Krishna is absolute. And because they are absolute in nature, our hearing about them will bring us also absolute purification. And our Krishna consciousness will become successful. So we should constantly hear this. And also because today is Vasu goes, Govinda goes. Sorry, Govinda goes from Chaitanya Teratamrit. It's a very short pastime here. Here also are Govinda goes, Madhava goes, and Vasu goes. Here are three brothers, and their Sankirta, congregations chanting, pleasing the Lord very much. Purport. Govinda goes belong to the Kayasta dynasty or the Uttaradiya section. And he was known as Gush Thakur. Even to the present day, there is a place named Agradweep near Katwa, where a fair takes place and is named after Gush Thakur. As far as Vashu Gush is concerned, he composed many nice songs about Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and these are all authorized Vaishnava songs, like the songs of Narottam Das Thakura, Bhakti Vinod Thakura, Lochan Das Thakura, Govinda Das Thakura, and other great Vaishnavas. I was very fortunate to participate once, I have been to Agradweep, on this festival day. It is very sweet and nectarian. 
Hare Krishna. Any comments or questions? Yes, bro. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. A very amazing class. Maharaj, I have a few questions. So one is regarding the advancement. One who is not willing to make advancement, he does, he avoids to get chastised to get chastised. So practically I see that when some mistake I do commit, then I feel that I can uh, get out of it by my own endeavor. By? By my own effort. <laughs> Why to unnecessarily <laughs> go and get chastised? <laughs> if we if we have the strength to if we have the strength yes to correct ourselves like that. We don't we don't need mm, our superior to correct us. That is false ego. Mm, that is false ego. It will not help much. It's very good. It's very good for us to realize, oh, I'm, I've done something wrong. I feel bad. It's a very, very good sign. Very, very good. Those who have this nature are fortunate. Still, <laughs> chastisement from our well wishers is more purifying. And it is necessary. Of course, you didn't do something wrong to be chastised. But if it happened because of our condition line, it should be corrected. That correction from our well wishers is more purifying than when we correct ourselves. Hmm? So we should, we, should, we should welcome that and feel happy when it comes. And even if we feel that I didn't do this, so you, you're not a pure devotee, you're just asking, even if you feel like that, still it is purifying. If you have not done that this lifetime, it means you have done it in a past life. Krishna doesn't forget anything. Krishna knows everything. So he cannot make mistakes. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, regarding destructive anger, you said, mm. so it's upon the, uh, the person who is getting chastised that it becomes destructive or it's both parties' responsibility to make it constructive anger. It primarily, it is for a person who is chastising. <clears throat> our chastisement, our correction should not be based on envy. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be based on malice or grudge. It should be out of love, out of care. Mm -hmm. So if you use a machine gun to kill a mosquito, that, <laughs> that is destructive. It's no more correction, it's no more <laughs> compassion. That is dangerous. It will break the person that we are chastising. So the person will not be able to handle it. With it. But this is too much. Hmm? That is destructive anger or chastisement. It's from the part of the person who is doing the correction. So Maharaj when it comes for anger, uh, out of love, so it is... Uh, I mean, I do. I have not failed. So, what is my uh, understanding up till now? Is that there is sort of some frustration, feeling of frustration. That is why we get. I mean, I get angry, and because someone is doing mistake, and I want to correct him, but that anger is coming out of frustration. Why he is doing like this? That is not. Of course, he will get benefited if he doesn't do like that. But that is not out of love. I feel. If someone do something wrong. So we are saying this is wrong, but we also should not make it wrong by, by because of some, someone's misdeed. We shouldn't become offensive because the person did something wrong. Correction is different. Correction doesn't mean we should become offensive or also make it wrong by correcting. So if you do like that, that means both of us are wrong. You don't have right to correct him because <laughs> you're wrong and I'm wrong. It's only a rightful person to do the correction. Last question. So Maharaj, uh, the right to correct comes by surrender. Like someone is surrendered, then the, only the person can correct him. Or if he feels that he, he needs this correction, he will get uh, advanced. 
so out of compassion only he can correct without the uh, without the surrender of the uh, opposite person the person who is doing mistake he is not surrendered to his superior hmm. because he is having many superiors but he is not surrendered to particular superior and he is liable to that person but still he is not surrendered so if he does some mistake so that superior who is supposed to uh, correct him correct him yes so he should correct or not because he is not surrendered if he is under him since he is under him he should correct that is his duty now is it due to the person being corrected to accept it or not that is his own problem not the person of a leader he has to do his duty we are all responsible for what we do hmm? our duties so as a leader because he's there he should do the correction he cannot say this is not under me if it's not under me then he should not be there he should, he should go to a different department he should not be there since he's there under you your duty is to do the correction it left for him to accept or not accept that is his own problem but you have, you have to do it. Hmm? Still, if he is not correcting, it is that is because of false ego of the person he is not correcting. Yes. Superior false ego that he is not correcting. Yes, I mean the, if the if the, superior, the superior person who is supposed to correct him does not do that, that means he he doesn't care for that person. If he care, he should do it. If he loves the person, he should do it. Even if the person is misbehaving, this is a duty since he's there. As a father, he should do it. He should correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Last question. Last one. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Uh, my question is, uh, you, you mentioned about uh, anger is a call of love, call for love. So there are two aspects to it. Uh, responding in a proper way. And when somebody is angry on us, we also don't get frustrated first. So how to develop a vision and tolerance so that we, when somebody is angry on us, we can see that this person is looking for love. And we also don't get frustrated uh, when somebody is angry on us. Because both of us are empty. We are empty people. <laughs> and... We, we are not grateful. Therefore, we don't see it that this is a mercy for me. If we are grateful, we we'll want to see that. So it, it, it's necessary for us to, to be grateful to, to Krishna. We should be grateful to the Prabhupada. We should be grateful to all the devotees around. We should be grateful. If we have gratitude, we'll be able to appreciate hmm, the mercy. And then we'll accept it and, and become benefited from it. If you're not grateful, we are going to, oh, who are you to correct me? I'm better than you. After all, you do worse than me yesterday. And today you become so pure that you're correcting me. All these are uh, contaminations because we are not grateful and we are not ready for advancement. If you are ready for advancement, you will see all these things as Christmas mercy and accept them and become purified. Sila Prabhupada ki, Simad Bhagavatam ki, Nithai Gopi Manandi, all glorious assembled devotees.